Yo, what's going on? It's Tavon. I'm sitting here with the legendary Tricky Stewart. We're going to ask him a couple questions. They got new music coming out, and that's always a blessing to everybody, man. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. No problem, no problem. Now, so how did the um, how did the union between you and the Dream come about? Well, Dream was just a phenomenal talent down in Atlanta. Um, when I moved to Atlanta, you know, I was just, you know, overwhelmed with how much talent was there. I got down there in 95, and, you know, Dream and I ended up meeting in the early 2000s, but... Uh, there was a guy that was working with me named Rob Hunter who essentially brought him in and kind of uh, introduced me to him and from there he got access into where we were. It was a building, you know, with four studios always going and he was in one of the rooms working and I would just, every time the door would open it would be something hot. So from that point, you know, um, I think he had gone on and to do Nivea's solo record and I was just kind of got a chance to observe him and watch him turn into a producer as well as a writer. And from there, from that point, I kind of really got attracted to what he was doing. And then we just started spending more time together musically. And one thing kind of led to another. And here we are, you know, I think it's been 10 years later, you know, that we've been rocking, you know, at this, that, at this level. So it's been good. Okay, so now... Y'all do a lot of the production. A lot of people don't know exactly how vast your actual catalog is. So with that being said, can you give me your three favorite songs that you guys have worked on so far? Um, it's hard to say because, you know, obviously the easy answer is to say the ones that were the biggest. But Umbrella and Single Ladies are two of the favorites. And then I would say, in general, working with Dream is my favorite, you know, because it gets... It's the place where we get to be unobstructed. It's the place where uh, nobody has to come in and sing the songs. Nobody's going to change nothing. It's like we're raw and uncut. So when you listen to Love, Hate, and Love Versus Money, which are the two records that I really got in there with them and worked on, you know, that's us kind of obstruct, unobstructed, just doing us with no A&Rs, with nothing. And, and that was kind of um, out. So my third song is Dream. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dream the collective. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of the collective, you guys have two EPs coming out, and yeah. um, the Crown and uh, I'm sorry, Crown and Jewel. Right. And um, can you tell people a little bit more about those release dates? How you guys decided to to release it at the this point in time? Because R&B has been needing you guys. We were just talking about this the other day. We need R&B. We've been missing R&B. We got Chris Brown out there. We need some help. Well, R&B needs some help. Well, what it is is that Crown is meant to be. Dreams essential, like what he's always done, which is super creative. It was R and B, it was pop, it was everything, you know. And everybody called it R and B because I think back in the day, like people, when you listen to R and B back in the day, R and B was also pop music. It wasn't necessarily like, oh, this is R and B. It was like when you heard like Marvin Gaye, or you heard Michael Jackson, or you heard whatever those records were. They were just the best records. So from that standpoint, I think that's what we always try to do with Dream. Um, but at the same time, I think. Jewel was about connecting the dots of these records that he's written for other people in the other side of his brain of things that he does that are creative that necessarily he hasn't necessarily kept for himself in the past. So what we're trying to do is just take you on a musical journey between these two records and between these two EPs. The one EP, the reason that the EPs are, got, are short is because we put six on one and six on the other one because people consume the music so fast and just trying to get people to focus that long you know, you you can lose your moment, and for us, I think this this project is about you know moving Dream even further than he already is into a space, and this gives us a, a more um, opportunity to make him bigger by spreading these songs out what's, throughout the year. What's bigger than the top? You guys are trying to what own the own all of R&B, right? You're trying to own the actual trademark R&B. No, song, songwriting, <laughs> songwriting, and dream the artist is two different things oh, okay. you know so we're trying to climb that ladder you know of the artist thing when you think of those artists that are at the upper echelon of their you know of their careers you know like we have grammys but dream doesn't have a grammy so this is the quest to put dream in that elk of artists so i thought he got one with the uh the jay-z track the um yeah, but that's that's, that's not his. That's, that's not, not his. his. Okay. I'm talking about Dream being acknowledged as the artist that he is and and walking on that stage for the 
12, 13, 16 songs, whatever it is, that he did right, solely. So, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can dig that. So now, that's what this is all about. Now, you're sitting in here, and, and we, we, do, we do style and fashion as well. So you're sitting in here, you got the Balenciagas on. You got the, again, he has a backpack sitting next to me. I promise it's worth more than my life right now. Stop. He has a pair of leather pants on that I know for a fact I'd probably These are go to jail for even look at them. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, so tell me a little bit about your style, man. And my style, we call this the God's Analog style. You know, I got an album coming out uh, with Dream. We're doing a production album, 90s hip-hop, kind of like a conscious album. And the whole God's Analog swag is just, you know, it's high fashion. Contra Paris is about looking good. It's about looking nice. It's about... It's about looking like where you want to go. So at the end of the day, you know, it's just about being clean. And it, it could be from streetwear to a suit. But it's just about as, you know, young black African-American entrepreneurs. It's about, you know, you got we always got to keep it fresh, you know. See, and I'm, I'm completely opposite. Mine would be more so like um, <laughs> angels analog or um, not close enough to church analog. <laughs> You're crazy, man. <laughs> My, I, want, I want to be at a place where people look at me and be like, yo, that dude right there did not just jump out of bed and throw whatever colors he wanted to throw on. <laughs> so, crazy. yeah, man. Uh, we really appreciate you sitting down and talking with us. Like, again, we, if y'all don't understand, y'all look him up. Google his name. Tricky Stewart. This man is a legend, a real-life legend here. And Tricky I'm, Stewart. Go to ContraParis.com. Check out those hoodies. Check out those hats. We got our apparel coming. Uh, tell we got exclusive the, CDs the coming. The label as well, right? Yeah, that's, that, I mean, that is, that's it. Contra Paris is the art label. It's where artists can be artists. It's, uh, it's, it's taking a, the business, is, is taking a back seat, and it's about getting the art, the music closer to the arts, you know? So, ContraParis.com. Tavon, thank you all.